Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Spacecraft. Broke the window again. Hey look, I fixed it. It's pretty good. So yeah, today is a very special day, as you might have all read in the, uh, you know, the, the thumbnail or title, I guess I should say. Title probably is the best word for that. But anyway, in the title, we are making a new power plant today. So we're going- we're gonna have to go to a creative mode test world, but I do want to show off some things real quick. And also, I will have to do a block scriber of the day, of course, as usual. So, first of all, we have our machines. I got more recyclers going, and I, I made these crappy-looking terracotta block things. I- honestly, it, it- it doesn't look good, but, you know, it's doing the job. It's doing the job, which is what we need, and... Currently, the mass fabricator is actually able to make things, so, for example, we can make this from 400... What? That's a ton of buckets of it. Redstone doesn't require too much. This thing requires 431 buckets of UU matter. We have micro buckets, so, um, yeah, can't make those. However, we can make redstone and iron ingots. Watch this, watch this. So let's go ahead and, uh... Put that in. We're gonna go for a single run. Look at that. It makes it makes iron ingots, literally. Also, our reactor is almost done with its first ever cycle. It's 739 ticks away. In 739 ticks, this reactor will be giving us some plutonium, which we're gonna scan into the machine. This reactor is also gonna be getting an upgrade in 739 ticks. We're gonna be making it into a pressurized water reactor today. So yeah, instead of whatever it is now, I, I honestly don't know. Um, and for today's block scriber, I guess I'm just gonna throw down a, I just, a, I don't really know who to do. So I'll give him just a random block today. All right, let's go ahead and place this down for, we'll give him a quartz block. So for the science demon, we have this wonderful quartz block. Um, Looks kind of weird, like it's been chiseled. I'm gonna go ahead and chisel it again, so it looks a little different. Let's go with. Uh, I feel like I feel like the science demon would like, you know, that a square quartz block. <laughs> all right, so here we are on a test world where I have been testing things like tree farms, all kinds of crazy stuff going on here. Anyway, ooh, look a wizard tower. I, I haven't been to this. Okay, let's get, let's get to work. So basically. What we need for a reactor is our, you know, normal reactor things. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reactor. We need to get out the uh, the chamber, the access, uh, yeah, the, the main thingy, uh, the fluid port, redstone port, pressure vessel. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves some leathers as well. So we're gonna go ahead and design this. So what you need is one reactor redstone port one access hatch and then as many fluid ports as you want uh, but you also need to make sure keep in mind this is going to be a five by five structure because in the middle of the structure is going to go our actual reactor itself we will have several of these at some point i do plan on having multiple i want to have like a good two or three of these just chain them together have a ton of energy coming into the base and this is the best way to get energy in ic2 all right, so now in the sense in the center, we're gonna go ahead and set up ourselves this, and then we're gonna go make these. So you want the ex the um, the actual reactor itself in the center, and this is basically kind of like an upgrade to it. You could say it's it's a real good upgrade. Uh, I do recommend using like a mod that adds pipes with this. Otherwise, you're gonna have to deal with a lot of headaches because these things are a pain, a pain. So now we should be able to access it. As you can see, we got this gooey. And it's bringing us to here, which is a little weird looking at first. Basically, this hot coolant, this is cool coolant, and then we're gonna be, if we want to turn it on, we just don't, there's nothing in there, so it's not even gonna work. Um, all right, let me go ahead and get some pipes now, so we can pipe out the actual coolant and pipe it back in. All right, so from here, we're gonna get ourselves some heat conductor I believe uh, we need a liquid heat exchanger and then we also need heat conductors of course so we need the liquid heat exchanger so doo -doo -doo -doo. and these will be taking our you know coolant and then making it cool again so we'll have three of these so three heat exchangers above these are gonna go the boilers 
we're gonna go ahead and fill this thing up with those. Boom. And as you can see, this this looks a little weird, but it's the same gooey basically. Same gooey. So hot liquid, then outputs cold liquid. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, now we need boilers. And boilers we will have. So we need a steam boiler. Steam boilers, these are gonna handle the water. So we'll have these there. We'll have to pump in the water, so we'll have water pipes like this. As you can see. Uh, we'll also set these to push, so that way we won't get steam inside of it. Then we'll go ahead and uh, use infinite water, I guess. Do we have... Yeah, we'll just set up an infinite water pump. Go ahead and uh, do that. Alright, so now it's filling up these, which... Um, one, one problem is the calcification. So calcification happens when, you know, unpurified water is in the system. So we will change this out after one cycle. Uh, actually, I could probably just spawn in the purified water if I wanted to. So purified... Uh... Water? <laughs> water? Universe frozen water, clean water is what we're looking for. So do we have any distilled water maybe? <laughs> I think we'll go with distilled water. They will do this and then the actual heat turbines come into play. So we'll need to pipe out of here again with, um, with this. So have it set to extraction mode. Now I'm thinking these are the right, the right direction, I think. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so now that those are set up, we could, you know, we could probably just take water from these now that these are all, I think they're filled up with water, right? Are they filled with water? Yes, they are. They're filled with water. And then I have to set this up, I think. But it's been a while since I've done that, so I don't remember exactly how it goes. Um, these are set up, I think, as well. You just need the... Yeah, the, the fan. Okay. So, fan. Let's go ahead and find ourselves the right thing. Oh, wait. Maybe it's steam. Steam turbine. Do, 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 do. Steam turbine. Blade. Steam turbine, I think is... I think we're looking for the blades for these. So, we need uh, one. Oh, never mind. Okay, we need the... But steam turbine. So I guess we need these ones, right? Yes, okay. So we need to put steam turbines in. Boom. And then we're gonna be taking the steam and putting it into another set of these things, basically. Um, we do want to have those side explo er, sides exposed, I think, so that way they don't explode if things go bad. <laughs> Alright, so we'll run it through these, and any extras will have to go through the, um, you know, it'll go back into the boiler, I guess, because certain types of steam, depending on how hot the, the reactor is running on, uh, certain types of steam are going to be, you know, doing weird things and causing issues when they put it, when you put them back in the boiler. Um, Actually, I think there's another block we need. I need to go check the wiki. It's been a while since I've actually done this before. <laughs> okay, done this wrong. So, apparently, from what I've read, you need to put three of these into... Oh, this, this is... It's gonna be, get weird. Okay, so, I just learned that you can actually use a... Instead of doing a boiler setup like we're doing over there, we could just do a really um, simple thing. Simple thing. Simple thing. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me think. Sorry, I'm bad at words. Bad at things. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and do this real quick. So basically, what I just saw was a liquid heat exchanger like this, which, boom, wonderful. So all we have to do is set those up. We have to put in some upgrades and things, and then things will work. So now, what I'm thinking is instead of powering it or activating it from the side, instead of doing it like this, to maximize our power output, we need to be brilliant geniuses. We need to just ignore the sides. Sides are bad for that. Just put the, you know, reactor access hatch there. Redstone port here, which is where we're going to power it from. Pressure vessels, and then we can just do the whole sides are fluid ports only. It will be perfect, and then we can do the bottom as fluid ports as well. So now, look at this thing. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's gonna... Okay, so these um these middle ones are gonna be inputs, so I'll have to configure all of this. But why is it not hooking up? Why are these not hooking up to them? Hmm, kind of weird, kind of weird. This might just not work. It might just not work. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm, but I'm excited to see if this will work. If it does work, it's gonna be really exciting, really fun. And I'm just gonna fill it with fuel rods. All right, so now I got myself some fluid ejector upgrades. So let's go ahead and put one in there. Aha, it does, it does hook up. So we need quite a few fluid ejector upgrades for these, I think. Just one should do maybe. Yeah, we'll just throw one into each. So one fluid ejector per fluid port. It's gonna be kind of expensive to make in survival mode now that I think about it. But we don't have to do the whole setup, you know, right away. We will spend a bit of time working on this just to get it, you know, good. Why are these ones connecting fine? Why are the other ones connecting fine? The other ones, I have to put these actual ejector ports in to make it do the things. Alright, so now we got our liquid heat exchanger set up. These ones are going to be using um, ejector upgrades as well for the actual coolant, and they'll be ejecting coolant into these, which I now have to hook all of these pipes up. It's going to be a, a pain to do. If I'm being honest, this is probably going to be the most expensive project of the series, but it will be automatically output to the bottom side. What the heck? What the... Oh. Okay. I mean, I guess that works. I'm just gonna hook up these things, I'm, and I'm hoping these will actually extract from them. <laughs> and I'm also hoping these are gonna extract the right fluid, because if we have more hot coolant going in than it's going out, uh, things are gonna go, go boom. Things are literally gonna explode. Okay, we've set up that part. We're gonna set up a port up here for actually inputting, you know, our first batch of coolant. But now, you may be asking, what the heck are all these heat exchangers gonna be doing today? Well, they are gonna be... Oh. Oh, it just converts that one. Okay. Well, I guess, um, you know. Alright, so basically how, how we're gonna do this is we're gonna go ahead and uh, get ourselves a Sterling engine. Sterling. Now, I do believe we could use that. We could also use the Wildfire Sterling, but instead we're just gonna go ahead and use this. We're gonna go ahead and get a wrench as well. Wrench. Now, the wrench is a handy dandy tool. He will do great things. Now the good thing about reactors is that when you when you make one of these, you're actually you're actually getting things out from them. Just wrench all of these like this. Boom. And then we're gonna start focusing on the actual power output of this design. Now this isn't the best design. Steam boilers are clearly much better. But from what I've seen. <laughs> This is a very, very... You don't even need to have the steam boilers, honestly. Because the amount of power this is going to generate is like 60,000 wind turbines. It's ridiculous. Alright, so now we have all of our heat exchangers set up. We actually have to power these things. So, powering them, we're going to use the ultimate cable. Because this is going to output several thousand, you know, EU per tick. And we're going to go ahead and set it into like um, just one of these for now. So the output point is gonna go do, 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 maybe above it. We'll just go like you know a few blocks above it. Hey, I just built it. I built an induction cell. Look at this. It can store 3.89 tera f. Also, I made this thing look like a, a bit of a fusion reactor. Actually, now that I think about it, I kind of want to have like a nuclear reactor that kind of looks like a fusion reactor, but it's not like um, you know a fusion reactor. Let's go ahead and get ourselves um, laser. Laser block decoration. That looks good. We'll go ahead and throw that in there. Make it look kind of fusion reactor-y, donut-y. So that's how fusion reactors look, by the way. If you haven't seen one, they kind of look like a big donut. For those of you who are interested. Um, do -do -do -do. Time to go around here. Make it look all nice. So basically, I have all of the systems set up. All we need to do is put in some coolant. And we're good to go. We have the whole multi-block done. Um... I'm not going to explain how any of this works, it just does, I think. We will be testing with MOX fuel rods and also normal fuel rods to go ahead and uh, demonstrate the differences as well, because I don't actually have access to MOX in our, you know, Let's Play Survival World. <laughs> I don't have access to that yet, but I, I will. this is what I'm going to be building probably off camera because of how expensive this is going to be. I mean, just look at it. It's epic looking. Don't get me wrong, it's going to be super expensive though. And this energy tower is pretty expensive as well, because it is made using ultimate induction. So we'll probably just use smaller induction and just build a gigantic tower or several of these, and it will look like a nuclear power plant. We'll also have to clear out a large area. So I'll be making three smaller reactors, probably. And then we'll be making the super reactor, which is what this is going to be. 
All right, no, enough of no, enough chat. Time to get this going. So let's go ahead and uh, get ourselves some fuel rods. So now I do believe you have to use the actual. Oh, we have radiation sickness. Okay, well we'll put that in there for now. So we'll be using four of these, and then we'll be using iridium neutron reflectors. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a stack of these in there. <laughs> Just throw as many of these quads as we can, because these things generate a ton of heat, a ton of, you know, fun, funness. Well, this is just an experiment to see how much heat units per tick we're going to be getting from this thing. So, yeah, there we go. We can also put in some cooling stuff, but not right now. We don't have any fuel in there. I just, I was about to pull the lever and make things explode. I spent so long making this, I don't really want to do that. So, coolant. We need icy two buckets of coolant. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a tank. So we can actually have a buffer, just in case things go wrong. That's gonna take us a bit of time though. Like, uh, we, we don't need that right now. Um, do, 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 do. Where is my, where is my basic fluid tank? Let's go with a creative fluid tank mechanism only. Do, do. Yep, go ahead and set up a fluid, fluid port. Eh, can I? Can I configurate this for, okay, push, push mode? Oh, is it gonna, is it actually putting in fluid? Oh, it needs, it needs the uh, pulling upgrade, I forgot. I, I need to go around and do this. Is it, is it now putting in? It's not putting in. Why is it not putting, oh, maybe I have to, uh, I'm an idiot, I have to do that first. As you can see, it is now filling up with IC2 coolant. Take that out because we don't want to ruin the tests. I'm so scared. I'm so scared to run it. Did it actually... Oh. Oh. You know what's wrong? You know what we're forgetting? We're literally forgetting the uh, the, the heating coil. So we need to go get some of those heat conductors and not risk exploding again. <laughs> literally, the stupidest thing I've ever done is forget the heat coils. I, I do need to set up the actual probably... Uh, ejectors for those, but for now, we, we just want to find out what happens. Okay, I got two more sides to do. Two more sides to just set up these. The deed has been done. Okay. Core temperatures. Oh, it's overheating! It's overheating. Holy crap, what just happened? What just happened? Uh, uh, no. Heat. We need heat vents, I think. Heat vents. So we need to get, uh, I'm gonna try the reactor heat vent out on these, because I, I feel like since so the core temperature, that's what this is gonna do. Um, as you can see, it will start slowing, ticking, slowly ticking down. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's a lot of heat units, it's at 1,200. Where is it all going? Oh, the, the coolant actually is going out. But what is it? It's going into the things! Oh, we need to get some cooling, some fluid, fluid pulling upgrades in all of them, I guess. Or was it, was it only this one? Wait a second, let me check. Let me go around and check a second. This is our end game energy production. Right here, this is it. The most complicated looking brick of every single piece of iron we've ever made at our base. Alright, so apparently you have to set these things to pull out of the battery boxes. I did not know that. I am really unfamiliar with how compatible mechanism is with industrial craft, but it seems to be working out fine as far as the fluids go, and it seems like the electricity is also doing fine. We're about to see how fast it's actually outputting energy. Oh my gosh, we've done it. Let's go ahead and check. It's got 1.1 MRF. If you don't know, that is a lot of energy. Uh, coolant. The issue now is actually getting the coolant into the machine. Um, and it seems like it, yeah, it has a big backlog, apparently. So if I, if I go ahead and run it. Core temperature's building up. <laughs> I need to put heat vents in there. I'm gonna go design, um, come up with a design real quick that, uh, actually will handle this. And do mox fuel rods and things. Alright, so now I have... Some basic components, some vents and things. We're going to be trying to run MOX. So what MOX is, is mixed oxide fuel. And this is um, ridiculous. 
basically, uh, the higher the temperature of the core, the better it will run. It does have less durability than normal, you know, just pure uranium, but this is perfect for what we're going to be doing today. So let's go ahead and uh, hook up some diamond things. Now, I haven't actually designed or tested a core for this, so we are, this is, this is literally just me throwing something together that will run with quad mox rods and also maybe iridium reflectors. So we'll go ahead and set these up like this, I'm thinking, then we'll go ahead and uh, use component heat exchangers. So these are going to be good because they will, these are faster than the actual advanced heat exchangers as far as I'm aware. Don't quote me on that. So that should dissipate a ton of heat right there. Boom. Uh, durability for the diamond things, probably gonna be, you know, decent, I don't know. Anyway, the output of heat is, yeah, it's measuring the heat output from, what if I get rid of the, oh, it does, it goes down, does it? No, okay. So we could probably just use component heat vents and then literally we don't have to worry about durability on those. Yeah, that, that's gonna work better. So if I just do all component heat vents all the way through. It should be a 3,200 HU per tick. We're going to try to get that to max, which is about 5,000-ish. So now let's go ahead and turn it on. The machine is generating heat output now. Um, as you can see, the components are hating me for this. But it is slowly building up heat, which means we could time this and run it for a certain amount of time. Uh, as you can see, heat is going. It's making the fuel. Um, one issue is that it's not actually doing all the sides. Why aren't all the sides firing? Only this side. Only that side. It is weird. It's it's not handling these ones. What? Hold on. Was this side running? Because there's energy in here. It, it's, it has energy. Is it... Wait a second. Maybe it's inputting from that side and then outputting. That might be the, why it has energy. What if we... Let's check these middle ones. Are the middle ones firing? Why isn't... The bandwidth on that one is not even existing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Interesting, but why? Why exactly is only one side getting... Okay, what if we go ahead and just connect them? It should be able to handle every side now. So every side should be getting coolant. Yes, that is exactly what's happening. So that's the issue. Only a few of these are actually taking out the output of the um, the thing. So now, you know, how's, how's the actual machine doing as far as temperature goes? Temperature's doing bad. I think it's gonna need a ton more cooling systems, so I'm thinking we'll just go ahead and throw in some of the good old overclocked cores. Yeah, they can handle this. 12,000 HU per tick. Oh, we did take out a ton of those, though. 12,000? That And by the way, that's heat units. Heat units. It's ridiculous. Um, we're gonna go ahead and replace all of these with... Uh, component uh, with the overclocked heat vents so go ahead and throw those in there like that 14,000 HU per tick yes <laughs> more heat 20,000 20,000 heat units per tick this is the, so this is the reactor I'm gonna go over it real quick again it's a donut reactor is what I'm calling it it uses all of these fuel pipes and things, they're piping out the coolant, they're piping it back into the machine, and it's, it has about, you know, it's got a thousand mega buckets, so it's all filled up. Heat temperature is doing good. Our heat unit output is right now slowly rising up to the 20,000 maximum. We are doing good, ladies and gentlemen. Four max fuel rods running. And these generate more and more energy for you know, the higher temperatures, and let's go ahead and check the actual output of energy. We are getting about, we're at 4.2 MRF in our induction battery over here. So, this is the end game design for a, you know, factory, uh, energy machine. Uh, of course, we will have multiple fusion reactors, because, well, I'm, I'm calling it a fusion reactor. It's actually, this is literally just a normal reactor, but... Yeah, I figured it out. It's designed. It's been done. It's complete. Anyway, so in the next episode, or in a stream, or something, I will be making this reactor in survival mode, and it will be good fun. I think I'll have to do it in a stream. So yeah, I'll see you guys then. 
If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, found it pretty interesting, you know, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, do all that good stuff. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them down below. I'll see you guys next time, and uh, goodbye. It, it was fun, this one. This one was a big challenge for me to figure out. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave you with this visage.